Hello and welcome to Ultimate Pool the Masters Week 19 Highlight Show. The world champion, the man that cannot lose at the moment, Rona McCarthy, is in action and he will be the favourite for this group. In our first match, he'll be taking on Aaron Joseph and then Christy Coldfield will take on Alex Bailey in our second match before the two winners will play each other to see who will progress through to the second stage of the Masters. Into our first match then, Rona McCarthy taking on Aaron Joseph. First up against Aaron Joseph, and it is Ronan with the first break. And you can see behind him, 50 minutes on the match clock. It is a race to eight frames, and we are underway. And straight away, a dry break from Ronan. So Aaron Joseph is going to get first chance at the table. And I'm joined in commentary by the Ultimate Board Director, Will Caldwell. And, and Will, it's... We talked about Aaron out in the arena. Uh, he's had experience out there before, but this really is a big step up for him. If he was to sort of not just beat Ronan, but to take down a group like this, it would be a huge, huge achievement for him. Yeah, it's a bit of a different experience for him tonight, Simon. Um, obviously, he played in the Champions League earlier in the year. It was in a tough group, obviously, that involved Gareth Potts. But they were short races, and he had a couple of chances against different players to you know, get a bit of experience. But... This is just one longer race match and he's up against probably one of the form players in the world. So it'll be interesting to see how he settles in these first couple of frames. But I do know, having spoken to him, that you know he is really up for it. Absolutely. I, what I like is he, he he's definitely trying to improve, trying to get better. He's working on his game. And yeah, these are the sort of challenges he wants and... I think the start of the match is really important for him, as you mentioned. But I think if he can get ahead, then you know it gives him something to sort of hold on to. But make no mistake, as good as form as Ronan's in, Ronan's under. You know he's a huge favourite to win this match, and he's favourite for the group, but certainly in this match alone. So if he gets behind, all of a sudden the pressure's on him, not on Aaron. Yeah, so a bit of a loose safety shot there from Aaron and just left an opportunity for Ronan to get going here. Pretty good chance for Ronan, to be honest. Yeah, I like the fact that Aaron pulled back because he, he didn't really have a, a finish on, but not a, not a great safety shot played. Should be pretty routine here for Ronan. Let's get his first frame on the board. Yeah, I think really in the way here, just pick his route. Just in perfect shape the whole way through this finish. It, it never really looked in doubt after he made his first pot. WEPF Masters and WEPF World Championships. Double was Mikkel back in 2010. Oh, golden break straight away. Just Aaron Day. Just Aaron Joseph, that is absolutely incredible. Crunched Pulled that it. one as well, did he? Look at his reaction there. Wow, brilliant stuff from Aaron. And I, I was watching the break and thinking he's controlled this well. I was watching the sort of cue ball thinking that's a little bit close, but there was good power through the pack, but that eight ball flies in. And just like that, we're 1-1. One, one. That's how you do it. Yeah, that's, that's just cheered him up, hasn't it? Players every single week where they're just playing fantastic pool, the rules are attacking, you know, they just break clear in left, right, and centre, and he's taking he's you know he's taking down five titles is it in a in succession. He'll probably be looking to tonight to try and get through, and he'll also be looking to the weekend as well, where he's 
featuring in the miniseries, thinking he's got a chance. And it's changed his ultimate ball career, really, in terms of because he was struggling for form, he was struggling for confidence. And, you know, especially when, you know, all this, you know, no disrespect to, to Ronan, but especially when you're Ronan's age, he's in his early 50s now, you start to think, you know, maybe his best days are behind him, but they certainly certainly weren't in terms of, you know, the run he's just had is it, arguably his, you know, his biggest titles, you know, taking down that world title, uh, incredible achievement and, and so many people so happy for him as well to, to see him achieve that. It's just such a crowning moment for an absolute legend of the sport. Absolutely. It was uh, nice to see him get a little article uh, on BBC Northern Ireland earlier today on uh, the social media. So word is spreading about his, his achievement and for it to reach you know, a channel like the BBC is a massive achievement for him as well. Yeah, he came on Ultimate Pool Extra uh, and we had to squeeze Ultimate Pool Extra into his timings because he was um, with the BBC as well that night. So it was kind of trying to fit it all, fit him, him around the BBC it was pretty cool. It's not often a pool player can say that, is it? No. <laughs> but it just goes to show where the sport's going. You know, there's more and more exposure coming to it. Every week there's somebody interested in doing something with a player or, you know, creating content with a player. It's just fantastic to see where it's going. Looks in good shape here. Might use the yellow. Decides to avoid it. Yeah, I think he's okay. I think he's just got... A Bit of angle just to draw this back and probably pop the red into the right centre. He really is so clinical. We talk a lot about his break, and, and rightly so, because for the level of player he is, his break is, isn't as good as some of the other top players. But the number of times he makes the clearance once he makes the ball, it, it, his ratio is very, very high. He's so clinical once the balls are open. And, and yeah, now he's obviously coming to Altman Pool, so it's, not, it, it's nothing new for him in terms of playing pool. No, absolutely not. And he was making semi-finals, I think, I think that's his best performance at World Championships, semi-finals of World Championships, when the likes of Mick Hill, Gareth Potts, Chris Mellon were all still playing in them. Back in the, what we would call the golden era. Yeah. Yeah, it could be very, very dangerous. Another great break here from Aaron. It controlled the cue ball even better than the first frame. This one came straight up the middle of the table and still huge power through the pack. It may not be a golden break, but it's uh, certainly giving him a, a great chance. Two yellows on the right-hand side just need to be worked out. I think one of them isn't so bad. It's the other one that's the problem. Has its options. I wonder if he could take it in the middle pocket. Would have loved to have yeah, another another be, roll on that one. He won't be pleased with this, but he's still got himself a chance here. If it goes one more roll to the right, he can take the right hand, one of those two yellows to the top with complete control and then everything's open. But he's gonna have to come back round for this one. Does it does it pass to the bottom right or not? Is it I don't think the right hand one does. I think the left hand one does for sure. You can maybe pop the yellow off the red though. Oh, needs this to stop. Yeah, he's... Yeah, he's just lost the cue ball He's here. just not quite got control of the cue ball yet, has he? I was going to say, he could maybe pop the, 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 the right of the two yellows off the red in the middle if he's got the angle. But he's looking at it now. This is going to be... He's got to be careful here. I think he can... It's only a small swerve to pop the one into the left centre. I think that might be the way to go, try and come back to this area. This is... A, a big shot he's taking. I think on. if he flicks off this this yellow that he's closest to, it will go in the middle. But the cue ball's going to be flying. Yeah, it calls I for an extension. Only, I think it's the only shot he's got. He just skims off this and maybe use the red as well. Like that. Oh, brilliant! And opened up that bottom corner. And I think he's on this to the top. If he's not, he's unfortunate. I don't think he's on anything. He he wants to be on the Can, one to the top right. He maybe take this one to, straight up the rail. I think he's got the angle. Might be tight, but he'll leave himself a... It's at least a shot. I don't think he can see enough of it. I think he's the red's just in the way. If, if he was on it, I think he'd go for it. But he's still got this up, this one to the top right. Yeah, he was on it. It was OK. Yeah. 
She's got to play a shot now, though, to get back across the table. Yeah, once again, he just could have done with being an extra roll or two off the cushion just to make this next shot a little bit easier. Played it nice, though. Yeah, he's played that well. and Still has a shot to play to get on the eight ball. Yeah, he's just got to avoid the red, hasn't he? If he can, if he can avoid a contact with the red, I think he's OK. Yeah, in avoiding, in avoiding the contact on the red, though, he's taking the cue ball up the table. So he's, I don't think he can get right behind this this eight ball. I think he's better off trying to just get the cue ball somewhere up near the break line and, and have a shot on it. Yeah, that's the way. Nicely done. Couldn't get better on it than he has. Yeah, just reset yourself here. I can see he's, he's, I don't think he's quite comfortable with this, but just reset yourself and... Yeah, to just see he wasn't quite quite settled on that there. I'm not sure why. I think I don't think he was anything was interfering with his shot. I just didn't he just he didn't seem comfortable the entire visit. No, and it's amazing actually. I, I can really relate to the the shot he's missed there. Obviously it looks a really simple eight ball that he's missed, but it's amazing what goes through your mind, especially when you're not used to that environment. Obviously, yes, he's played out there before, but this is a big stage and you know, he didn't quite have control all the way through that visit and he would have wanted to be better on the eight ball than he was and strange things get in your mind like, you know, you're, you're thinking about what the, the, the shot means, you're thinking and then you let, maybe sometimes you let negative thoughts come in your mind going, oh, this yeah. would be a bad one to miss and, you know, it was one that needed attention but if he's if he's just having a knock on a practice table, he's not missing it. Yeah, I'm just wondering how much of this eight ball he's left and he's obviously not left enough for him to have a, a snick at it so he's going to come off the, the rail. Oh, yeah, and he's got nowhere near there. He's made it slightly interesting. Half blocked the bottom right-hand corner, but Ronan has cue ball in hand, and he's going to open up the pocket. So he's going to play red off the jaw and then open it that way. I wonder whether he'd play on the right at the bottom and then save this shot for later on. Yeah, it, I think going that way maybe just puts a little bit more pressure on the finish, whereas by doing this, you sort of give yourself options. Now, saying that, he's, has he made this red slightly more awkward? I well, think that, it still goes. That was my worry, was that the eight ball could go and sit on that red and be awkward, but it... Yeah, I think it's that deceiving overhead once again. I think this, this red does comfortably pass to the bottom right. But he, he didn't have to, because that went so comfortably, he didn't have to, to uh, take the risk. He could have got rid of the red at the bottom of the table then and played up to the, the one he used and there would have been no issue with it at all. But it shouldn't cause him a problem, assuming it does go. So. Oh, it's a little tight for comfort. In the yeah. end, it's perfect. The fact he's played and it's, yeah. it means it will go comfortably. For a second there, I thought he was going to finish right on the bottom cushion and just leave it as awkward as it could be. Yeah, so a big eight ball for Aaron Joseph to to miss. Going to give Rodham McCarthy a 3-1 lead. And 3-1 it is. Those are the moments and the shots that Aaron can't really afford when he's playing somebody in the form that Ronan McCarthy is in. Ronan won the next four frames as well and is now just one frame away from victory. Well, oh, here's a big break there. Cue ball straight in. Well, here you go then, Aaron. It's marginally trickier than the chance that Ronan had off Aaron's fouled break. Yeah, there's just that cl two cluster of two reds, uh, two reds and two yellows near the eight ball. Just a little bit awkward. I think the yellows, every pocket, every ball's got a pocket. You can't say the same for reds. So that's, I think that's why he's going to go and choose to take yellows. Yeah, I, I immediately felt yellows, but I, the one, as we look, the one to the left of the eight ball there is the one I don't like. But I like the way he's going here because he's leaving one to connect to that one. I didn't like the three in the bottom half of the table together, and I like so I like the way he's going. Yeah. Although Ooh, he's that's a slightly strange. He's, he must have desailed on there because that needed to be pulled back a few inches. Yeah, now he's going to be skimming across these reds, isn't he? If he's uh, 
Yeah, he has to take it now. I don't he wanted to be straight. Way, I don't think there's another way to get back on it. I think he has to take yeah. it. For me, he wanted to be straight in on this. If he gets straight on on this to the bottom corner, he, he gets straight in on the one to the top left. And that gets him straight in on the one to the bottom left and the eight ball's waiting. So it was all about just stunning that last one back a couple of inches and it just it, it didn't look like a deso. It looked like he purposely rolled through. I think that was one of those where his focus was all on the pot rather than the, the cue ball. Yeah, and although okay, they're not they're not perfect here for Ron and I th you know, you fancy him to go on and get them. Yeah, he's got a couple of tricky balls, but they're not that bad. I think if he stuns this one in, he can get on the one to the left centre. Yeah, there you go. Well, not necessarily stun it. He's got margin to roll it through because the straighter he gets on that red, the better. If he has a lot of angle, then he's going away from his last one. Whereas if he's almost straight, he can drop it in and take the red to the top right corner. So he wants to be precise and... Looks like he has a nice angle here that he can either drop it in or you go on and off the cushion. Nice pot that one. He would have loved to have been a a shade straighter on it, but in it goes. And the count and clearance is there. Ronan McCarthy with a very professional job there, taking down Aaron Joseph by eight frames to one. A difficult night for Aaron, but he'll learn from that. He will be back. On to our second match then. Alex Bailey takes on Christy Caulfield, who has the break in the opening frame. Yeah. Going well. Yeah, yeah, but he played against... Uh, he did a six-way shootout with Jack Whelan, didn't he? He did. He played, he played phenomenal that night. He really did. Well, golden oh, break. Oh, and a golden break to... Oh, Is it a golden duck? duck? Oh, oh, my God. Wow. Wow. What a start we have. He was 1-0 up for about a second and a half, and now he is 1-0 down. The eight ball flew in, but watch this cue ball. Oh, that little oh, secondary nudge on second the yellow as well. Is. Heartbreaking start for Christy Caulfield. 1-0 down, one shot played. Just what Alex Bailey would have wanted to see, though. Christy won frame two to get on the board and has the break in frame three. Yeah, you just said that he's probably missing that big senior title, if you would. Oh, he's holds his hand up there to Alex as the last oh. ball rolling goes in. I've never understood that. <laughs> said this a few times on commentary. Are you a, are you a hand up for last ball rolling or not, Will? Because... You're trying to make a ball off the break. I mean, yeah, I, I don't think it's luck that sends no. it in. It's just the path of the ball. That I, it's not a fluke, is it, that it goes in? It just the last, It just happens to be the last one. So yeah, got to agree with you there, Simon. I'm sure I would even hold my hand up if I completely miss hit the break and had a perfect layout. I think it's just one of those things. Anyway, some players choose to, some players don't. And one thing's for sure, he's got a great chance for a first clearance off the break in the match because these have really come out well. It's a, what, half a positional shot to play. Land nicely on the one in the bottom half of the table. Could be his last ball. Probably should be his last ball. leave himself a nice angle on this uh, second to last red to get over to the rail it looks natural to just drop this in and he just wants to be a roll or two pass straight on on the one to the top left it gets himself in a little bit of trouble if he finishes straight well maybe he had a touch more angle than I first gave it credit for so he's tried to use the bottom cushion and, and check it up a little bit now he has to play around with the yellow on the right hand side near the right centre pocket it will feel very big to him that ball plays oh, that really nicely yeah I think he's okay yeah. this even angle again on the overhead 
I don't think he get, could get on this ball any better than he has from where he left it. Oh. Hammered it in, really, or tried to. One of those that we've seen this table play a touch generous at times when you sort of float them in, but he, he's chosen to go for the sort of the positive approach. We, when you go the way he goes, it gets you queuing through the ball a little bit better, but also makes the pocket that little bit smaller. Could cost him a frame here. That should cost him a frame here now. Lovely shot from Alex Bailey. Yeah, the finish is going to be all about navigation back up to the three yellows at the top of the table. Because I don't think there's a plant on. So he's going to have to land on the top rail. If the bottom of the, the bottom of the three yellows passes, he's okay. It'd be really interesting actually to see how he goes three at the top then the two at the bottom do you play on the plant the problem with playing on the plant is the yellow could go away from the pocket and then you're not you're not on anything yeah. so it's, it's a risk <clears throat> yeah it's a tough shot but I think he's going to go that way maybe just leave him with a, himself with a little bit of angle on it so that if it does at least he's coming over that way yeah the eight ball sort of blocks you from having too much angle on it though doesn't it yeah. so, interesting one so it's very important that he just got to play his dead weight, hasn't he? Yeah, and he gets the he doesn't miss it thin, so he doesn't hit the he doesn't want to hit this like the, into the cushion and then get the yellow going away from the pocket, like that. Yeah, that was always a risk. He had to hit that without hitting the cushion for me, but but be, that was he had to be so precise because of course if he goes the other way and misses the cushion too much and he hits it thin that way again he goes away. Yeah, he still fancies himself on this, but I don't think this is as simple as it looks. Yeah, he's done well. It well. Just one of these eight balls that you've got to give full care and attention because the natural is close to the bottom pocket. Oh, there you go. dear. And that's all to do with the previous shot yeah. where he, he left himself thin and he then he d dropped it in as dead weight as he could. Yeah, they're the ones that you've just got to, you've got to pot them with authority because... Like I said, he was he was flirting with the bottom pocket if he played it natural. He just needed to stun it. Now, we've got to take into account that these guys are all going to play as well. So, they're likely to pick up some ranking points. So, yeah, there's every chance for anyone that's coming into the Challenger Series on the 9th to the 11th to get those last few spots. Yeah, this time, I talked about Alex's break. It felt like he was breaking with a huge amount of backspin. This time, he, not the same level of backspin, but it looked like he came across that one. Just not striking it particularly well. There's no power driving through the pack at all with his break at the moment. Big frame, I think, this one. Race to wait, of course. 29 minutes left on the clock, but... Christie wins it, goes 5-1. You're really starting to break the back of the match. Where Alex wins it, 4-2. Okay, two frames is... Can easily swing quickly. Yeah, he's unfortunate there, isn't he? He's just... Just had to hit a yellow hook for the best. The yellow he has hit, I think, opens up a red to the bottom right corner, the one by the eight ball. Yeah, so it does. The only thing that for Christie is having to play this red with cue ball in hand. Well, actually, he tries to play into into the problem area as well. I was going to say, he, if he didn't, he could have had the one on the right-hand side. I think it does slide past the yellows, and he could have played himself on that one. Do you think that goes down the rail, Simon? It's tight. It is really tight. Yeah, when you look at the overhead, it looks like it does, but when you look at the main camera, it, maybe it doesn't. So another cannon required then. Has an angle to do it. Yeah, he's going into it. If he goes into the yellow, I don't think the yellow will go. I think he won't go towards it. He has to avoid the yellows. Yeah. He misses the pot because of it. Now, this is Alex Bailey's opportunity now. And OK, it's a cluster of yellows on the right-hand side, causing a bit of a headache in terms of a chance, but... Chris, he's had his chance in this frame. Alex needs to find a way of winning it. 
for me, a major visit to the table. Oh, it's touching ball on the yellow. That helps. Allows really him to play helps. the loss of turn. Just open things up. Well, there's a question for you, Simon. Does this red... So I don't think it does. I was going to say, if he flicks it off the cushion, does it pot into the middle? But I don't think it does. No. It'd be some shot. I think it's just a, a roll too, yeah. too low. Again, on, this, on this angle, it doesn't look like it does. But when you go to the main angle, it looks like it might. Certainly having a look at it. Is he looking? Yeah, I, don't, I, I think that's off the cushion. I think... I think we're about to find out. No, well, he, he's not. He's he wants it to, but I don't think it does. Yeah, he's willing to. Maybe he can try and send it up the rail, but even then, it's, it's long odds. In the end, it was come off one cushion, hit it solid. Remember, he half hit a cushion after contact, so he couldn't just roll off the bottom cushion and roll up to that red. He always had to hit it solid, as much as that looked like a casual bit of a hit and hope. He knew that there was nothing more he could really do. There was no area for him to put the cue ball. Yeah, has he left the angle on this yellow? I don't think he has, just to break out the cluster. I think he'd have to really force it. He's going, going to. Go. Yeah, very yeah, good. Very good. Not has he been rewarded, though? No, not nicely on the next ball. I am saying very good to the way they came open, but hasn't landed on anything nicely. Might have to be one more safety, or does he have a pot to the top of the table? He had a pot up the table, drops it in, and now he's in perfect shape here. I'd be tempted to play the yellow nearest the right-hand centre pocket off the red, assuming that's a comfortable shot. The reason being, that then becomes the pocket for the eight ball, assuming the one to the bottom left is your last ball. Just to move it half a roll down the table. You don't want it to allow it to get into the other yellow. Doesn't have to do that, of course, but just solves a, makes a last positional shot a shade easier. He obviously fancied himself to get on the eight ball to probably to the bottom of right. Couldn't finish too much more awkward than that. He needed that to run another six inches. I think it was the way that he potted the, the yellow. If you notice, it wiped his feet a little bit. I think he caught it as clean as he would have liked, but this is a nice recovery shot. Yeah, very good recovery shot and back in perfect shape. This one drops in the right centre and eight ball is waiting. Kubel is going up the table, so he could come back across it. But no, I like it. Drop it in. Don't have to overcomplicate it. Yeah, that's a big frame this for Alex Bailey. That will really help him. That will really settle him into the match. Alex Bailey won the next two frames as well to tie the scores up at 4 4. I mean, it's a huge again. explosion, isn't it? Look at that. Just a huge, huge break. And actually, it's not the greatest of opportunities considering how big he's just broken. Yeah, there's the. Uh, Problem here with the yellow and the red at the top left of the table. I think he, he almost has to go red. He just has to get one good positional shot to get on that red at the top with an angle that he can get them back out. But then you're always going to have a problem getting good position on the eight ball. No obvious ball to do it with. I, I say he could go yellows because he can play a yellow off the red at the top and then all the yellows are much more open. But then that makes that eight ball even harder because it doesn't have its obvious pocket. So maybe the double on the eight ball or develop it. Great shot. <laughs> what a shot that is. Yeah, now yellow's look. He still the, the doesn't go bottom left, but it's, it's in a much better position than it was. Yeah, and that, uh, what I love seeing about that, that's a player that's really seeing finishes. That's a player that understands what he's doing and understands his problem balls, the eight ball. And there you go, opens it all up in two shots. Yeah, he's one of those players, Christy, that, you know, he is right on that edge of being, a, you know, in that professional tier. He's, 
He's got all the shots. He sees the finishes. Probably just needs to be, a, you know, arguably a little bit more consistent, doesn't he? he? He'd be right there. Yeah, frames like the last one for me are the frames that, if he can just tidy up those sort of frames where, okay, Alex has missed, but the chance that Christie had on on his colour set was low percentage and he's tried to take it out. Whereas actually, you know, you watch someone like a, a Mick Hill in that situation and they probably will, will mess the table up and slow it down and, and wait for a better opportunity. You can't always make finishes. And in Challenger Series matches, races to six and seven, so you, you, know, you give away one of those a match. And it's tough to, tough to do against good players. Yeah, well, this has been well worked through. Oh, it's been brilliant. This is why we rave about him and, and talk about him. Just this eight ball then. To nudge back in front. Very impressive visit to the table. Best visit of the match for me. Very impressive. Ah, oh, cue ball. Eight ball's moving as well. It's a great splitting for as well for from Alex Bailey and take a look at these yellows, Simon. Yeah, chance to get that separation again, isn't it? Immediately disappointing from Alex. And these might not take long. The last chance from Christie required a couple of really good shots to open up. This one doesn't. These are all there. Just into that 15 second shot phase of the match as well. Christie is quite naturally a, a quick player. So we shouldn't take too much adapting for him. It's finished now, just about controlling that cue ball. So after all the momentum had swung over to Alex, it looks like it's shifted now back to Christie. Two on the bounce. Just this black for a 6-4 lead. Yeah, very impressive. That never looked in doubt that finish, did it? Oh, we gave the break the big build up. That's probably the worst he's yeah, hit it. There was still huge say, power there. Yeah, but that's the worst he's hit them, isn't it? Well, Alex, if you're going to get back into this one after doing all the hard work to get back into it originally, you need to go now. These are all there. Christie's just had back-to-back -back finishes from the break. You need to respond with one of your own here. He's a roll short on this one. Cubel's going towards the yellow, which he doesn't want. Ah. Well, Focus away from the pot. And all these yellows are there now. Yellows are there as well, yeah. One good positional shot to get on the two on the left-hand side and the rest is there and he's got the perfect ball to get in between them both straight away. Could have done with being half a roll off the cushion so he could have dealt with the two on the side straight away back to back. Now he's got an angle where he's, the red could come into play. He's just held it. Alex will be kicking himself there. You knew what a, a big opportunity that was. Yeah, the sort of layout that when you come to the table, you you feel like you should be taking them out. And, you know, 6-5 in your break and six minutes on the clock, you know, you're right in it. But when you miss and if Christie takes these out, you're going to be 7-4 in your break. It's a huge difference. Yeah, not sure whether the... I think it does, the eight ball maybe just squeeze through the reds, but he might just choose to well, he come onto the right side of the table. He left himself a bad angle there and he could not risk finishing short, so he's made sure. And it does mean that he's he probably does want that red to go in the right centre. Because otherwise he's got to get through a, a whole host of reds to get better on the eight ball. 
Yeah, especially now he's the wrong, you know, he's technically the wrong side of the yellow, isn't he? He's yeah. probably wanted to be on the other yeah. side. So it obviously feels like it does go, possibly just punch it off the red. Yeah, I think it goes straight, but he could play it off the yeah, red. Just, this will just fly straight in this, Simon. No, just off the off red, the red. But very nicely done in that group. Should be absolutely cracking viewing on Monday night, as it always is in the pairs. Well, that's about as bad as it could have gone because now that's ball in hand anywhere on the table. Ball All right, they're not, a, they're not an easy layout. But that could be the last shot that Alex Bailey plays. Just going back to that group, Simon. How good were Christy Caulfield and Connor Tracy in the, in the group that they had? You know, Mick yeah. Hill and Phil Harrison, not them out. In, Fantastic style as well. Yeah, and oh, it was a positional shot from Christie goes wrong. Alex might get back to the table. Let's talk about that group quickly. And yeah, it's uh, I get first pick on Altmer Paul Extra this week on who who we think we're going to win. And the obvious pick looks like it's Sean Story and, and Chris Day. But I mean, there's something about that Connor Tracy and Christie Colfield pairing that I really like the look of. I mean, look at that great shot from yeah. Christie. They're just fearless, aren't they? Yeah. I, I think that's the best way to describe them. Yeah, I don't know which way I'm going to go yet, but that it's is a, bit a, of a minefield of a group, isn't it? It is, yeah. It was a it was a massive minefield with uh, with with Carl and Carl and Jake in there, not taking anything away from Brian at all. But how good were Carl and Jake? Yeah, they, they were arguably great. the performance of the of yeah. the whole series. And they looked like they always felt like they were going to be a great combination together and it, it played out exactly that way. Yeah. It's a shame not that they're not going to be here, but you know, with the the, the schedules that they've got, it's uh, it's just unfortunately a clash this time, but we will see them back in the event next and we, season. And we will see Christy Colfield back in the event because he has flown through this finish and this has not been an easy finish from where he was after the first shot. This has been absolutely brilliant stuff from Christy who will be in the pairs on Monday and he will be in tonight's group final taking on Rona McCarthy. A brilliant performance, especially from 4-4 from Christy. On to our group final. Christy Caulfield will play Rona McCarthy and it was Ronan that won the opening frame. He's got a very good break, but it's not worked here. He didn't catch them well at all either, if you noticed. There's two breaks on the trot, actually, that have not gone as well for Christy after the first four or five breaks being fantastic. Obviously, one of them was a golden duck, I know, but the quality of the break was fantastic. Yeah, interesting that both players have scratched in the top right corner. Ronan was straight enough, and although Christy wasn't, he was, he was always flirting with it, and Naturally, a stray ball kicked him in. Nice layout here for Ronan to take out. Yeah, could could have made a case for, for Reds. It was probably a 50-50 call on this one. Yeah, I like the way he's going in terms of I had to play on one of those two short positions where it opened up the other one but now the other one becomes a lovely last ball for the eight ball the only thing I would say is the one at the other at the top of the table if you leave the two at the top of the table you've got the red in between them plays a little bit big I find it fascinating watching great players and it really I get so invested in the puzzle and the patterns of the of the game that I just love watching these guys and try and work out what they're trying to do the way they're trying to go you know for me I had the one over the right center as my last ball but the one at the top of the table didn't connect to it so he's and he's all this stuff's going on in his brain as he's working around the finish and Ooh, this wow. time it's not worked for him he didn't hit that one very well no I don't think he I don't think he caught it very, very well. And now, although we may well make this eight ball, it's not easy. He doesn't. He doesn't, but 
Taking a pocket in this game is not a good thing unless it's the, the eight ball blocking a, an opponent's ball. Yeah. Gives him at least something in the frame. But this is the shot. Yeah, see, it throws really wide on him. He didn't really get any top spin on it. Yeah, he potted it slightly thin as well. Yeah, like you said, Simon, there's only one ball worth leaving over the pocket, and it is the eight ball, because you have to pot the eight ball in its own right. Cannot be combined. Yeah, two schools of thought. You play this, a if you're going to play a snooker, it has to be a very good one. And if you decide to go, then he's probably just going to play low on the red and play for the double. Straight's not ideal. And plenty of angle left. So he wants to get, if he's playing on the double, he wants to get about level with it. Oh. What's I think he might here? have, I think he may have miscalculated here. I think he thinks this is for the, for the win. He's playing the combination shot, but that would be loss of frame. Even if the red goes in, it's loss of frame. And I think that's what Ronan's about to say to him. Yeah, that's exactly what Ronan's saying to him. Christie has got his... He's got it wrong. The next two frames were shared. Oh, hit them really well. Oh, he's unfortunate. The only ball he's going to make. He's really unfortunate to get kicked in there. Yeah, shake of the head. Because well, look at what he's left as well. <clears throat> wasn't tracking towards that pocket, was it? It was It was around that area, but look yes. at how many kicks he's had. It's, and he it's, did make another ball in the end. He had a, a rogue red goes in at the end. That was very disappointing for Ronan because he did hit that break really well. Yeah, so a lifeline here for Christie. I'm assuming the yellow goes through the gap of the reds to the top left, otherwise he would have played on for a top right. And the rest are all there. These all just connect up dot to dot here. Nothing really to work out or worry about. Well worked out here from Christie. Yeah, never looked in doubt, did it? The way they, uh, they were laid out. Just a comfortable layout at the right time as well. Just to let himself back with him one. Kubel stays on the table. He would have felt like it was going to be 4-1. Instead, it's 3-2. Eight balls on the move. It's, it's there, I think. Oh, oh, golden break. There we go. A tease of a golden break. It was tracking that little final nudge, making all the difference. Watch the eight ball here and watch the yellow. Oh. 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 Heartbreak for wrong. Ronan McCarthy. He gets a bad nudge and it costs him a reverse clearance. And then on the other side of it, he gets the golden break. Christy Colfield back all square. Christy Colfield made it three on the spin in the next frame to go in front for the first time before Ronan won three on the spin himself to go 6-4 in front. Yeah, well, we've touched on it before, but how good is it to see Darren Appleton back on oh, the English eight ball so table? Good. I'd love to see him enter more events. Are you, are you giving anything away? Are you, are you hinting towards a potential wild card there? No, absolutely not. Uh, <laughs> Going to keep know, trying I do, for I do, everybody. I do, I do keep my, my cards close to my chest and... Uh, you know, one thing I will say on, so on behalf of Ultimate Pool, you know, man of Darren, Darren's calibre, he knows he's always welcoming Ultimate Pool events. Nice shot from Christie just to open up the two yellows. Yeah, a nice drive break at the right time for Christie. I know he's had a few in this match to, to feed off, but 
he felt that if Ronan had made a ball there and got himself 7-4 in front, it would have been a tall order. He, he felt he needed a, an opportunity like this to get back in the match. I know it was only 6-4, but that raced away. Once you get to 7, it, all of a sudden you... You know, the 7-4, you feel like Ronan's going to get a chance somewhere, so... Yeah, so for, for those of our viewers that haven't seen Ultimate Pool Extra, Simon, what was the, the picks this week from yourself and Scott? Well, it's, it's yeah, interesting. So if you didn't see Ultimate Pool Extra this week or you, you're unaware of Ultimate Pool Extra, we, Scott, Ryan and myself, we have a pick each week on, on every event. And uh, at the end of the season, whoever's had the, the least amount of success will be going for a dip in the ocean in Blackpool, which is coming around quick. It's only a couple of weeks away now. And uh, it's starting to get cold out, so we're not looking forward to it. Um, and yeah, I've got Ronan McCarthy this week and he's got Christy Caulfield. So we're, we're both still in the hunt. Yep. Um, so a deciding frame will be fun for us and we'll be on the phone as soon as <laughs> the action <laughs> finishes tonight to either, well, I will be if, if I win. But the way that Christie's gone through this, it is still very much in the balance. It was a great chance to be going at, but very nicely done indeed. 6-5. Christie Colfield won the next as well to tie the scores up once again. Eight balls on the move. Oh, cue ball was close as well, but it's dry, dry once again. again. And OK, not a brilliant chance. But a a problem on both colour sets but a chance. So looking like he's going to go and take the reds. There's argument that yellows are probably the better colour suit, but you can't. There's no easy opener. And at this stage in the match, you just, you just Glad that you've got a chance at the table. I wonder, is he thinking about... Uh, he can't play... I was thinking, is he thinking red off yellow, but to make the yellow go down and give a bit more separation to the red on the right-hand side. But the problem is he can't replay it firm enough. Getting on that red on the right-hand side is, is tricky, but getting out off it is also very tricky. Yeah, so it's subtle, but what that's done is it just means there's more room. And you can see straight away, he can now play on that red and there's a gap to get back onto a red at the top of the table. Doesn't want to leave it too late because the eight ball doesn't go top left. Yeah, he's got the, the sooner he can get on this ball on the right on rail, the better. Because like you said, Simon, there's no... There's no easy pocket for the eight ball. I think he's going to choose to get on it now. Just run through with this red. Get as close to this red on the rail as he can. Yeah, he can't get particularly close to it, but I think it may be his best option. He's thinking about dropping this in. That's what he's looking at there. Drop it in, use the red, screw off the yellow down there. But I think he, just get the cue ball across to the right-hand side and back yourself to cue one in. You can see if he tops that through, he can only get to the break line. That makes the one to the bottom right really tough. Now he's going to have to use the yellow. Screw back off it. This can go wrong. So, yeah, this is the, big, the biggest shot of the night now coming up, Simon. Yeah, for me, I, I think I preferred, would have preferred it previously, as in it was easier to connect to the red than it is the eight ball. But it's, I guess, the same level of, of pot down the cushion and he'll still get on the eight ball from this. Has he been? Has he? Has he been fortunate? He's okay. Yeah, I think he's okay. Yeah, that was really well queued in. You say that he's looking. Well, he's not happy. No, the fact he's looking at other options, he isn't, and that's exactly why I was saying I preferred the shot previously on the red because the red was higher than the eight ball, and there was more room to land on the red than the eight ball, and you would have been able to just drop it in and have eight ball left centre. Well, there's only one. There's only one yellow that's that's in the middle of the table that's an easy shot here. If you can, well, has he got it here? Wow, what, what a, a shot, shot from shot. Christy Caulfield. With the beeps clicking down, he has come up with a moment of absolute magic. Eight balls on the move. And it's a huge break. Does he have an opener? Does yeah. he have an opening pot? I think he does. I think he's got the yellow to the middle. 
Yeah, big break when he needed it. If he can get this yellow to the middle, it's a huge chance. I think he has to swerve it. He was digging down. I think he has to, yeah, he's having to bend this. Oh, excellent opening pot. Now it's hold yourself together because everything goes. Yeah, plan your route, back yourself. Doesn't want to be straight on this. Yeah, I wasn't sure with that one because if he gets straight on that yellow to the top left, he can top it in and doesn't have to move the other yellow. Could have potentially potted the two at the bottom, then got straight in on the one to the top left, left the other one in the middle of the table to bottom left his last ball. Nice to see Harvey Perry there in the audience who we've uh, had on the Masters a few weeks ago now. So it's another big shot from Christy Colefield coming up now. As long as the natural's missing the yellow on the left-hand side, he doesn't need to worry about the cue ball. He can just cue this one in at a nice pace, but he's going to be close to that yellow. And he missed it by a distance. Well, I'm actually thinking there... He's not, he can't have played safe there. He can't have played safe, no. but that was just, just the way that he went for it because he didn't play it with any sort of conviction. I think he was just trying to float it in dead weight to stay on the, the, the yellow on the left-hand side. Because yeah. the, the harder he hits that one, the wider it throws, and then he's definitely going into the yellow. Yeah, the problem now is the yellow doesn't go, and this is the sort of frame that Ronald McCarthy will love. I think he'd have loved it more if the yellow hadn't have blocked the red, as in then he could have just gone for the finish. But yeah. he's got to have to work out his own problem in that bottom right-hand corner. And I think he would rather... I mean, he's tried to pot that one, but the way he's landed, he would have probably preferred it not to go in. No, absolutely, but there's, not, there's no danger of the, of the match got coming into this, into this match at this point. So Ron's not got to worry about that, but... Yeah, and ties up the eight ball. That's his thinking there. He probably hasn't tied it up as much as he wanted to. No, but there's no easy shot here for Christie. He's got a, all right, he's got this, this yellow long, but where'd you go from there? It really is interesting tactical play there from Ronan, because a lot of players there will just brush off the red and maybe try and get the snooker, but he's trying to put the eight ball safe to really put, give Christie a problem. Oh, what a what shot. A shot but what a shot that was to try and open everything up. It's the sort of tactical play we see Mick, Mick Hill go for a lot, where yep. right, you try and mess the table up more rather than lay a snooker because it, it sort of gives you more mileage in the frame. Yeah, what he has done there, though, is he's potentially left a nice, easy block behind the the red for Ronan. Well, I think he's... I mean, Christie's all legs in one basket here. He's going. It's going to be a double-double. Maybe a double cannon. Can he avoid the red? Don't oh. think so. Well, he can avoid the red, but not to get a line on the eight ball. So it's double double. There's one of them. There. Oh, he's blocked. Oh. The, he's he blocked the double. I think he might have blocked the double here. Well, in the previous frame, he came up huge. He's looking at the treble. He needs to come up huge once again. He's looking at the treble, Simon. No, it's not, not going to land. So, I, to be honest, I think this match deserves a decider. The way it's gone, I think it's had a bit of everything. But Ronan McCarthy's still got to knock these four balls in. And he's opting to play safe, which I think is the right shot. But we've seen Christie get out of one before. Yeah, the only thing you will say, if Christie gets out of it, Ronan still has to play position onto that red. He would love to see Christie foul here so he can get cue ball in hand. It wasn't one of those where he's developing a ball on the cushion whilst late, uh, getting a snooker. I said, oh, oh my incredible. God, where's the, eight, where's the cue ball? Oh my goodness me. That is just one of the most incredible shots you will ever see. Christy Colfield, Rona McCarthy, both of them thought the match was over when the eight ball went in. And look at this cue ball. We're going to a decider. And that only tells half the story. Ronan was already up to shake hands. Christy was already thought he'd won.
And he has made a ball. And he has a great chance. He has a fantastic chance. Just a little bit congested. I'm assuming he has to go yellows here because the bottom left-hand corner is blocked off. All the yellows go. He just has to be careful with his cue ball on a couple of shots. And the eight ball's in a slightly awkward position. He's opened up the eight ball. And that has come out really nicely for him. He's got a lovely angle on the middle of the three yellows. Oh, he's not on the next one, though. No. He's just come off a little bit thin off the, the red. He wanted to catch it just a shade thicker to stay on that yellow. There's another twist here. Well, this match has just had everything at this point, hasn't it? It really has. I still can't get my head around the shot we saw at the end of the last frame. Okay, I so Ronan's not going to give away anything here. Still has somewhat of control in the frame, but Chrissy's going to be thrilled just to get to the table. Well, if Ronan McCarthy goes on to win this match, Simon, from there, from here, I think it, you have to say at this point that there's other, there's other spirits playing with, it, <laughs> playing with this because but, uh, that, that shot... That, no doubt that, that shot's going to go viral once that's going to be up shortly on social media <laughs> and I, we're just still speechless here yeah i'm not sure stunned silence works as a commentator but that's no, exactly where we're at we didn't know what to say it was uh -huh. just insane and uh christy will feel aggrieved but he's just got to sh shut it out of his mind and think well i'm still in this match that was risky and he's played a poor shot that was very risky from Christy Coldfield. That was the one ball for me. He didn't want to move. He has lift, left Rona McCarthy a brilliant chance to win the frame. He's done his hard work for him. He's now three balls away. What a match. What a night of Paul again here with the Masters. Certainly took a few extra seconds on that one just to make sure. Simple eight ball to follow. But it is the world champion that makes it through this week's group in a deciding frame. An unbelievable match of Paul. Christy Colfield played a huge part in it. So much drama along the way. And that wry smile from Rowan McCarthy tells a story. He is through to the second stage of the Masters.